Darren. Yeah, good, I don't want to follow that. Good, good, is, good to see you again. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, and if you don't know, what? Where have you this been? Is Darren Thomas, the VP of Storage. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good, We're good. Are you? Well, I see you've been on 24-7, right? Uh, been here all day? Yeah, yeah, you know, we haven't slept. <laughs> We've just been drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> yeah, but we, got a, we, we were there. Kelly saved us seats for the keynote, and uh, so uh, I was down there. It was good. good you guys yeah. do a fantastic job. Yeah, Michael's awesome, isn't he? He's uh, he's such a charming guy and uh, and such a, a fan of storage. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, we couldn't have done what we've done at Dell uh, without a without somebody like Michael. And to be quite honest, there isn't anybody else like Michael, so we couldn't have done it without without him. So it's it's pretty. I mean, four companies in three years, uh, more than two billion dollars spent, and and we bought two of the best assets. I mean, everybody's saying it, so you know, I yeah. might as well say it. Uh, the two best yeah, assets in the yeah, in the uh, in the startup industry. Actually, Compellent wasn't a startup, uh, but it was a smaller yeah. company. But yeah. you know, right. two the two best assets in the industry. And uh, you know, I'm 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 very happy with that. And I got my work cut out for me because yeah. we got a lot of integrating to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go ahead. No. 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 <laughs> I'm just going to continue on that integration process. Uh, you know, the the challenges that you guys face through that process. If you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, well, it's, you know, if, if you want to really technical geeky, I mean, all these things don't run on the same operating we're system, geeks, right? right? We're geeks, we're, we're among friends, so <laughs> so they don't run on the same operating right. system. You've got some of them running on a Linux kernel and some of them running on, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the other operating systems. Uh, uh, it, it, at some point in time, if you want to go integrate these things, it would be helpful if they use the same code base. And so... Uh, you know, as we go to do things like take the Ocarina code set and actually run it on the same processor, mm-hmm. not in necessarily in a VM. I mean, we don't really, I mean, we've got multiple cores, so we don't necessarily have to run separate VMs, but we may choose to do that just for simplicity. Uh, but it, at some point in time, then being on a common OS would allow us to, to make some pretty quick integrations. So we're looking at things like that, which okay. means, you know, someone's got to change. Right. right. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, those are some of the things. We, uh, we, we don't run all on Intel processors, so uh, some of those things uh, okay. may have to change. Uh, and then you, just looking at the software value set, I mean, imagine uh, uh, Compellent does snapshotting. Right. Google Logic does snapshotting. Right. Uh, so does... Uh, so does uh, the uh, file system, the, the Dell Scalable file system does snapshot. Right. And they don't all set the snapshot up the exact same way. Mm. Right. And so if you want to have uh, Equalogic control the Dell uh, f- file system snapshotting, mm. uh, it, would be, it would be ideal if they set up the file uh, or the snapshots exactly the same way. So right. that, you, you wouldn't have to go change the GUI or change the way one of them does it. So it, it, the devil's in the details. There's yeah. thousands of these kind of discussion points. And uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about Dell is uh, we're able to create an architectural team made up of some of each one of these teams, bring them all together in a room. Now, it's about 15 people in a room, uh, but they're the 15 of the brightest people you've ever met. And we sit down and say, okay, we're going to solve this problem today. And, and we get after it, and it's it's actually some of the funnest meetings I go to. I go to a lot of not so much fun meetings, and I look <laughs> forward to those because we sit in there with a bunch of really smart guys, and they all get along great. And they, yeah. And so do you hold those meetings on neutral ground under a code name? Yeah, yeah uh, we, we we don't we don't we don't advertise where we are because we have too many people would would come hunt us down, but. Uh, uh, we've had two of them. Uh, both of them, both of those, have been in uh, in Austin. Uh-huh. But uh, but that was because they were this winter, and we weren't about to do them in Minnesota uh, or, or I Nashua. Hear, yeah. I keep hearing that theme. Well, it, it was a rough winter for Nashua. So. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it yeah. was. And so I think uh, now that it's now that it's nice and warm summer, I think we may do one in Minnesota. Okay. okay. Now we bring our friends over from Israel too. Uh, so I don't know. You know, Paris is halfway. Yeah, uh, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's a good option. Yeah. That would be a you good option. You can't complain there. I, I, I've learned that, you know, if I don't pick a really fancy, cool city, I don't get as many questions on the expense reports. But, uh, uh, you know, I might have to pick, like, Barcelona. There you, you know, go. Barcelona is a great yeah. city. That's a beautiful city. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, but we're going we're gonna to keep doing them. We're, we do them. We do actually two a quarter. We do one on the... Uh, we do one on the business side, so it's just as technical. But the people driving that are the are the uh, marketing team bringing customer inputs in, and then we do one on the technology side. So if you yeah. were one outside in, one inside out. Yeah. Okay. Good. So one of the things that you guys talked about, you know, and, and 
and as you you were asking questions of Michael, uh, I think one of the things he said was that you, Dell has a very predictable approach in terms of partners and channels. Yeah. Um, you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so so this is a statement I think he, he answered in response to uh, you know how do we uh, are we channel friendly are mm -hmm. are we a good partner. And the answer is uh, the predictable part. What we really need to do is have a methodology where, uh, and, and, and salespeople are all fundamentally driven by the, the same motivation. They want to sell and they want to get paid for their selling. Right. And so what you have to do with salespeople is you have to create kind of a level playing field between the direct sales force and the channel. And the predictable part is we have very clear processes. So if you find a deal first, you register it, and you got that deal, and you had that deal for a reasonable period of time. You win that deal, you had that customer for a lot longer because you you demonstrated the win. Right. And so uh, those are some of the predictable things I think we do. Uh, we are growing our channel, so we're not we're not like a company that spent its entire life having a channel process. But that that's really good because the channels are pretty mature. Yeah. They, they know what they want, yeah. and so we can step in and say, look, you know, here's. Here's what w here's what we see and the value we think you can bring, and so we kind of move over and make room for them, which is much easier than trying to build something from the ground up and then go and trying to add a direct sales force. One of the other things we do is by compensating our own sales force for anything the channel sells, we're basically giving the channel the ability to call on our our more technical people sometimes, and say you know hey I, I need some help with this I've got this total cost of ownership question I've got this you know networking question can can you help us we can bring in the resources and they're gonna they're gonna get paid so yeah. it's a very predictable system that way as well a lot of channel partners want to make money in services and yes. things like you know so so and you but you've grown your services organization right. as well. So talk a little bit about the dynamics there. What well, you know, it's, it's a, the, let's just start with the industry. It's, a, yeah. it's a, the industry of, of customers at the top demand, you know, a professional service and a service organization. So Dell has to have one. There's right. no there's no way we can not have one. So the acquisition of Perot gives us like a, a, a A1 plus asset that we have that can uh, be that professional service and be that uh, that arm to the enterprise class customer who can go all the way from show me how to do it to manage it for me. You know, all, all we'll handle all the buttons, all the knobs. Uh, all the way to if a channel partner has that process, well, we're going to inspect them to make sure that it's as good as we think it needs to be. But then we have the ability to back out and just so they, they can call on our on our process. They can not call on our process. Mm -hmm. So so it gives them the freedom. And a lot of the channel partners, that's one of their biggest value adds is that that close hand holding, high touch model. And, uh, and 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 be quite honest, they do that great. And we don't need to we don't need to interfere with it. So. So I think we, you know, we've kind of got the best of both worlds. We'll do it, and we'll do it direct. We'll do it for a channel partner who can't do it. Maybe they they sell a global account that mm -hmm. that, that exists in a country that uh, the the channel doesn't, and we'll also uh, we'll also back off and let them do it. Yeah. Uh, we do we do inspect. We do make sure you know it's the trust and verify model. We do make <laughs> sure that they do what the customer asks for. So. Yeah. But, uh, you know, one of your old buddies is here now, oh. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide uh, out for a second and let him sit down. Oh, well, the you're you. bringing in the interrogator. Oh, I'm bringing in the. <laughs> this is going to be good or bad. I'm not sure which way it's uh, going to go. So, Darren, good to see you <laughs> again. Good to see you again, John. All right. Yeah, Dave Vellante. Hey, Dave. How, how have you, you been? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, that, I guess I wore John out, and they have to bring in a re I guess uh, so. replacement. Hi, Kelly. Right? How are you hey, doing? Hey, Dave. Fresh, see you. fresh <laughs> you off too. the airplane? I am. Yeah, you took yeah. the airplane. Fresh is the operative word there. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm all scared now. I was, uh, I, was, I was coming east, so I'm feeling good. Yeah. So how you doing? I've been watching the, uh, the event last day or so. Yeah, it, it, this has been super. I mean, when we put these on, you can imagine a lot of work goes into it. I, I call our staff here the wedding planners. This is no. like, this is like putting on the royal wedding. You know, we got we got royalty. We had Michael here today. It's a. But where's the wedding dress? Yeah, they're wearing the dresses. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and we are here at, at, at Disney World, so you know, there's. A, That's true. I, I've seen a we couple wedding gowns out there. Right? There's some people getting yeah. married here. So. <laughs> so you've been busy last uh, we, we, couple we, of years here, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, be careful what you ask for. When, uh. You know, uh, these acquisitions were. This is the dream team, and uh, it's it's a great uh, it's a great assembly of awesome technology teams of people, sales teams, service organizations like Copilot. Uh, we, we've just built uh, a, a, an enormous 
uh, portfolio out of out of uh, several companies, and now we're doing all the integration work. We're making it. Uh, we're, we're finding the areas where this is a best in class and that's a best in class. And we're saying let's do the let's do this and this on everybody. So, uh, Michael talked about uh, Copilot. Uh, you've you've probably heard about Copilot. Copilot is the process mm-hmm. the Compellent team uses, where their system is monitored by a, uh, a Compellent employee. Uh, and if it ever has any issue at all, we generally know about it before the customer does. Uh, they, uh, uh, Phil gave an answer or an example of a customer who we got a call and said the machine was heating up. We called them and they went down in the basement and looked and the air conditioner just quit. Ah. And, uh, and the machine was heating up. We told them before the rest of his equipment crashed and uh, they were able to uh, avert it. So that's what Copilot is. And, and Michael seemed very excited about what, it. What was amazing is when we mentioned it on day one, the audience cheered like a bunch of college kids <laughs> for their team, you know? It was an amazing, uh, it was an amazing reaction. I mean, these are, these are nerdy, you know, people here. And we got like a high school hooping and hollering going on <laughs> because Copilot's that, you know, uh, that, it's that exciting to the customers. So we're, we're going to take that model and we're going to apply it to everything. It's going to take us a, a while to do it, but our intent is all of our enterprise storage products are going to have that capability. Mm-hmm. Darren, I wonder if we could go back a little bit and talk about Dell, you know, the company, and then specifically Dell, the enterprise storage company. And a lot of our audience may not be familiar with, with what you guys are doing here. When you purchased Ecologic, did you know at that point that you were going all in? Uh, or was it sort of, hey, we'll do this, it fills a hole, and, and we'll learn? I mean, take well, us back a little bit. I, you know, we had those conversations. Um, we knew that Equalogic would be a, uh, a challenge for our relationship at the time with EMC. We knew that would be Something the you, case. Something you were very proud of, obviously. You yeah, yeah. I, I had been working with the EMC relationship. It had been in place, I think, like maybe 10, 10 years back then. You, you were breaking new ground with that relationship. Yeah, and, really. and it was, it, it, I mean, it served its purpose with us. And I think with EMC, it was the most successful storage uh, partnership in the industry. And we were very proud of it. But uh, the, the time had come where, Dell needed to uh, participate more in this industry with its own intellectual mm-hmm. property. And at the time, I don't think we foresaw that uh, that we thought Equalogic and, and EMC would coexist, and it did for a while. And uh, but I think what happened is it was so uh, it was uh, so much uh, it was so successful at Dell that uh, it, it became obvious that we should do another one of those. And then that, that one became it. pretty obvious <laughs> that it would, it would uh, you know, the, the, some, of the, some of the buttons were going to come off the sports coat at that well, point. Well, EMC time. was like the first love, you know. You, you're, yeah, you remember you know, forever, but yeah, you got a sign to move on, right? Yeah, so. and, and, huh. and we still have a relationship with EMC. I mean, yeah. to be clear, we have a lot of customers. I like to say it's been a good marriage and we had a lot of children and we, we need to take care of the, of, of the customers. And so we still have the ability to deliver those solutions. We still uh, partner with EMC. We still do a lot of business with them. Uh, but it, uh, clearly, I think, uh, you know, it's become a more tactical relationship, mm-hmm. much less strategic. And tactical just means it's not going to it's not going to have that uh, that aura that it did. And uh, it's it's going to find a new level here. Yeah. So you learned a lot from that. And obviously, you've pulled together quite a few pieces of intellectual property and, and now have a lot of arrows in, in the quiver. Um, so mm-hmm. but I, I guess what I'm trying to understand, again, to help our audience understand, is what is Dell, from an enterprise storage standpoint, going to be better than anybody else at? So, um, and, and I'm going to kind of repeat what Michael said. If you look at the enterprise industry, Everybody focuses on that left side, that 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 the, you know, those large global super accounts, the ones that buy liter- probably 10% of the of the products sold in our IT industry. But they're the they're the uh, they're the diamonds. They're the ones that everybody goes after. Uh, and and if you look at all the uh, technology companies out there today, you see they have a huge investment in that end of the market. Yeah. What's very unique about Dell is if you look very carefully, all of our investments are in that mid-space. They, we did not go hard left. Uh, we, we, we bid on 3PAR. That would have been a hard left, but that was not our priority. 3PAR, okay. uh, had, had we got it for the right price, I think we'd have been very happy with it, but it would not have stopped us from going after a company like Compellent. Yeah, uh, big gap between. There's a big gap yeah. between them, yeah. Between so yeah, so sure. we, we, we took a shot at that, but that's another example of the big guys. That's their more important priority. Our, impor- our most important priority is that center stage, that center area where 
believe it or not, this where 80, 90% of the market is. And that's what Dell's famous for, and that's what Dell's known for. So believe it or not, we sell as much compellent and equal logic in the SMB space as we do in our large enterprise space. That's shocking to most people, but it's exactly fits Dell. Yeah. And I think, so what are we gonna do better? We're going to be we're going to be that center that center space. We're going to be the balanced team in the middle. And what's the benefit of that? I, I think if you look at the numbers, what you'll see is even the large guys are using the technology from the center guys. And as Michael said, the centerist technology has often won the won the day. Look at the x86 uh, computer. Uh, that came out of the mid-range and center space, and it now dominates even to the left. So, so we have a rich heritage of winning in the middle, and the middle becoming, you know, becoming both ends. Kelly, that's an interesting answer, right? Because you know, Kelly's not a storage wonk like us. Oh, you're not. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can tell, but but so but so the the answer wasn't a technology answer, you know, which is normally what yeah. you get. You know, we're going to be bet, best at best at this or that, yeah. Answer. And one of the other things that Michael said um, up on stage to that same question was that, that that you guys take an open approach. Yes. Can you expand a little bit on that yeah, in terms of what he meant? If you think about it, open is natural. And by the way, I, I get this question a lot. Open doesn't mean everything becomes in, industry standardized, mm -hmm. commoditized, dropped to the lowest common denominator. That's what a lot of people think open means. It's not what open means in the enterprise. In the enterprise, open means it's substitutable which means that if you buy a Dell server, could you substitute somebody else's server choice. in there? If you, yeah, it's choice. If you buy a, a Dell storage device, could you substitute somebody else's fiber channel storage device in there? If your model has, if we're selling, let's say, a Juniper switch and your model has a Cisco switch, can we substitute and still work? Yeah. Yes. There are companies out there that if you try to make a substitution, the whole thing falls down. And, and so th when we say open, that's what we mean, is that if you have a model, if you already picked your infrastructure, if you've already picked your server vendor, we, we will still sell, sell you storage. And storage doesn't mean that my storage is going to use industry standard APIs to manage the snapshots and replication. Nobody does that. But what it does mean is you can communicate it with it on I standard. Uh, you know, industry standard, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, FCOE, and NAS solutions, and the and by buying into our strategy, you haven't locked yourself in to Dell uh, Dell only answer. Now we'd love for our customers to choose to be with us, but not to be locked in. I, I, I look at you as the Burger King of the enterprise, right? Yeah. Your way. I, mean, I actually yeah, yeah, pulled yeah, that line King, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Did you use that line? I used your line. Oh, good. <laughs> you have it your way. So well, have it your That's way. That's a pretty right? old ad, though. But uh, yeah, I guess. But the concept <laughs> applies, nice right? What do you want? Yeah, I don't and, think you know, they've been using that since you were alive. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about, can we talk about the cloud a little bit? Right? It's a big trend, everybody's talking about cloud. Clouds, yeah. Big data, right? But yeah. So what, is, what does cloud mean to, to Dell and how important is it? Well, I, I can't speak for all of Dell. I can speak for the storage side. I, when I see cloud and when I see people talk about cloud, it's, it's, it's clear that a lot of people mean different things, but the, one, the common elements of cloud are they mean this uh, system that can scale to very large, be very highly managed, and, and can have multiple tenants on it. This concept of lots of people on a big system and it's very well managed. That, I think those are the common elements. Whether the system is uh, owned in a, a, a third party uh, place and you write code up to it, uh, that's the you know the public cloud versus the private cloud. You start to get into some differences. Whether the cloud's made up of very expensive storage devices or made up of super cheap storage, and somebody writes a uh, a super app that sits on top of that's all you know gets into the the, the fuzziness. What I think Dell wants to be is we want to be uh, one of the arms dealers selling into the clouds. So we, if a customer wants to make a cloud out of a very optimized technology that is very automated, we have compelling. If they want it to be so easy to manage that you know a, a, a sysadmin, one sysadmin can do the work at 10, we have, we have equal logic. If they want it to cost very little, be a very uh, low end device, uh, we, we, we have our Powerball device. So we, and, and if they really, really want to do their own code and not have any code from us, we have the data center solutions codes, DCS. So we can basically sell to whatever your version of the cloud is. And, uh, and so our view is we're not going to define the cloud, the customers are, yeah. and we're going to have the right products for them. Because whatever the cloud is, it has to be highly automated. Uh, or you can't manage it. And it has to be multi-tenant, and it has to be uh, something that the customer can uh, uh, afford to build at the scale they're talking about. It so has to be secure. Yes. Well, so now, so so that's the sort of head of storage answer. I get that. Yeah. It's good. You're an arms dealer. Right? That, 
it's good. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, right? These days. Yeah. Yeah. But well, you're not satisfied. Well, I go to this. Well, my, but you've also done some other acquisitions yes. in, the, in the cloud, you know, Insight One and, right. and, and Boomus and others. So um, you're building your own cloud, especially, and, and I, what I like about what you're doing is you're not trying, if I understand it, you're not trying to be a platform as a service vendor and go right. attract developers like Azure. You're trying to basically go after certain verticals. Yes. So having said that, the, the cloud is all about direct. And, yes. and so my question is one of channels. How do you, first of all, what have you learned from, from com, uh, a compellent and equal logic from a channel standpoint? And how do you convince your customers that you're not going to you know, reach around and do the direct model? Yeah, this, that's not a cloud question anymore, right? Well, it is in the, in the sense that if you've got your own cloud and that's oh, yeah. a direct channel. Um. Well, I, I think there's room in this industry. You know, Dell may have that we may build a uh, cloud the, uh, uh, and and have that cloud uh, be usable by our laptop, you know, customers or be a backup location or something like that. But that won't be the only answer. That won't be our major answer, and we won't be trying to flip. You can't flip enterprise class customers to say, okay, look, we want you to put your data up in the cloud for security reasons, as right. you mentioned. Even if they, even if you could convince them of security, their intellectual property ownership, banks, you know, they're not, you know, the regulators won't even let the banks put it there. Yeah. So, so it, it, you're not going to get the, that one answer for everybody, and and I think that's fine. Actually, that works in 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 our in our favor and in, in everybody else's. But uh, yeah, we've made a lot of investments in these uh, in these software tools that let customers do it better, and we will use those software tools both to make our own on-prem clouds for our customers, and our channel partners can do it. And we we did this thing called VStart, where it's it's literally a sure. cloud in a box, and a, and our channel partner can sell that. You can just say, look, I you know here's a here's a a, a a bunch of servers and a bunch of storage and a bunch of networking and and by the way because we're open you can substitute this out and put this one in and yeah. so v start if if you don't like the way we bundled it you can you can pick and choose you know to have it your way and then and then we can sell that out through the channel and the channel can deliver it so so our model is channel friendly uh, we we are going to give uh, the channel access to any product we have or any solution we have even if we were to have software in the cloud solutions, which I don't know if you know, that's on our horizon or not, but even if we were to do that, we'd still let the channel partners play because the channel partners, we're not giving them boxes to sell. They are solution sellers, right. and we've got to give them solutions to sell. There's been a lot of talk about yeah. that here at the, at the forum. As a company, you've made some, some strategic moves. You pull back a little bit from the gadget market. Good, good move, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm still not clear on how that's all going to shake out. I have three gadgets and you know, laptop, iPad, yeah. iPhone. They haven't pulled out completely, you know, given the streak. Yeah, it's no, interesting. Yeah, I know, but you, I, I, I would say you got pro. it. You got, I got your. My, that's got cool, my, but but I mean, it's not like you're pro. you're betting the company. On <laughs> he that likes business, to show right? it off. <laughs> so that's that's good, but but I I, I look at you as as especially the uh, enterprise businesses. You're chasing after profits, not not revenue. Right. And and and, it, and and that's near and dear to what you're seeing because you know storage declined last quarter, but your storage, your IP mm -hmm. yeah. grew. Maybe not as dramatically as you'd like, but the but the potential is there, right? Because you just yeah. started with Compellent. So could right. you talk about that a little bit? That that transition, and yeah. What you're seeing there? Yeah, we absolutely. I mean, for the for the first uh, six years of my career here at Dell, we very much chased revenues without without real you know strong margins, and uh, and, and we got the revenues up very high. But it was kind of it was it was a little bit for the stockholders. It was like empty calories. It w it wasn't really what we wanted. And it was it was great experience for us, by the way. We 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 learned to sell. We learned to sell in the enterprise. We learned to talk the language. We built up sales teams. We built up technical capabilities. Brand, brand. Uh, we we did a lot. And then and now that we have our own intellectual property, we have this ready-made outbound team to to go deliver. And so I, I think this transition, if you think about it. We had to learn to, you know, it was a crawl, walk, run, and we had to learn to do this. And I'd, I'd say, you know, we may not be at full speed running, but we're in the run phase, not the crawl phase. And what you're seeing is, yeah, some of our revenues, some of those empty calorie, re calorie revenues have declined, uh, but we're they're being replaced with very, uh, very rich margin revenues that allow us to become a member, a true enterprise class member of this uh, of this community. And uh, I, I, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm impressed with how little they've declined, mm -hmm. considering we bought two companies that you yeah. know. But when we both when we bought them, they both had less than 200 million in revenue, and so we're replacing something that the, you know the first word was billion, and we're replacing it with two companies that start at 200 million. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I know everybody's kind of watching our revenue numbers, 
but uh, the, the margin numbers, the margin lines, when you need to be looking at them, I'm, I'm fixing that, and when that's fixed, everything else will take care of itself. Yeah. You no, know, it's right. interesting because you're in a lot of low margin business, but the storage is not a low margin business. There's a lot of upside. For, for oh you, yeah. Isn't there? Oh, there is tremendous. Loving those storage margins. Yeah, and 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 <laughs> and, and you got to realize what we're doing is we're taking two products out that as we started this conversation off, these are best in class assets. We're taking these assets out with the global range of Dell, with the brand of Dell, and remember in that SMB space. Those big guys on the left, their name, believe it or not, you know, their name's not the best known name. You know, this is like, you know, you you might find some super movie star over here, but they're not known in this country. Right. And uh, and and the Dell brand is pretty well known. It, it's known in the SMB space. So so we've got the brand to go in the space we are. We we've got the products. The products are awesome. You, 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 if, if you go to one of these events, just say the word co-pilot out loud and you get a, you know, the house will come down. You, 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 we've, got the, we've got the excitement. It's just a matter of now, we, we've just got to get some time. We're building our sales team. We're hiring more salespeople uh, this year than I'm hiring engineering people. And, I, and I'm, I'm probably going to add maybe upwards of 500 engineering people to my team. And the sales team is adding even more than that. And so we are in that exciting phase of growth. You notice every startup company is, that you can talk to will come in here and say, I, uh, at, at Dell, they doubled my headcount. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I doubled it when we bought Oak Arena. We doubled it at Exonet. We doubled it at Equalogic a year ago. And I'm, I'm on my way to doubling that again. And Compellent is in the process of doubling. That's the kind of investment we're making. And you know, so we're putting the wood behind those arrows that I got plenty in my quiver. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's really exciting. Yeah, it is. How, uh, go ahead, Kelly. How long of a process do you think that takes to get to the numbers that you were talking about? Um, I, I think, I think uh, this year we'll turn the corner and the revenue numbers will okay. start, to, uh, start to grow again. I, I mean, I, I'm still declining on one side and growing on the other. I'm sure. still trading off decline. But I think by the end of this year, my declines will be will in fairly insignificant okay. compared to my growth will be fairly significant. And you'll start to see the impacts of the compellent equal logic, Exonet and Ocarina. You'll start to see those sticking through. Right now, you've probably seen more of the decline than the, than the increase. Yeah, and, and macroeconomics is a wild card that you can't control there, obviously. Yeah. And, and who knows what's going to happen there. But, yeah. I mean, I look at, uh, can you grow faster than the industry, right? Which, particularly with your own IP piece. Well, those... That's the key. I, well, we've been... Those pieces have been growing faster than yeah, the I mean, industry. I mean, uh, Michael mentioned that Compellent uh, grew last quarter, was was more than twice as big as Compellent's prior quarter before we bought them. So just going by quarter to sequential quarter, we're, we're growing. And you can imagine that's... That's a doubled in a single quarter. That's that's way better in the industry. So yeah. it's off a smaller number, but uh, Equalogic continues to grow, and and we just launched the FS seventy five hundred. Mm -hmm. So Exonet uh, finally has a, uh, some skin in the game now, and I haven't even got my Ocarina product out there yet. So <laughs> so I, I mean I, that I I'll tell you this I don't think that's any challenge for us at all to, to grow faster than the industry. Yeah, with specifically with your IP with, piece with my IP pieces and, yeah. and eventually the overall piece. Yeah, and, still and, and does it become a bigger piece the overall piece? Well, Right, because you want to gain share, presumably, yeah. right? I mean, do you, yeah. do you care if you're, you know, if you pop up at the, you know, the old Jack Welch number one or number two on the, uh, let's say yeah. IDC is the gold standard of it. Do you care about that or do you care about, I want to be number one or number two well, in my markets? No, I, I, I absolutely care. I, I, I just have to be patient because, you know, this is one of those <laughs> things where, uh, you know, I had to, I, you know, it's like I, I, I feel like a little bit like I bought a new piece of property and the house that was on the property isn't worthy of the property, so I have to tear the house down and build a new house. So for a while, it doesn't look better. It looks mm -hmm. worse. Right. I'm demolishing. That's that right. doesn't look better than even the old house did. But as I'm rebuilding, I think you're going like, to like the property and you're going to like the house. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's like the NFL. you got some elite teams oh, yeah. in the league, and they all want to be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's a rebuilding yeah. year for some of my teams. Uh, now, but, in terms of the future, what kind of companies are you looking for? Are you, is there anything specific that you're um, wanting to acquire? And well, I think somebody's out there, I want to be acquired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, with Dell's history, I, I get every phone call. So, I'm sure uh, you do. And, and ones I don't get, Michael gets. So um, I, I think we handed that a little bit today. We, we talked about mm -hmm. uh, disaster recovery, the, you know, backup and archiving yeah, backup area, definitely. data data management, uh, you know, uh, in, in that area. I think there's some room for us to, to, to look into those areas and, 
Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to mention any specific names because I don't want their prices to shoot up. But the, <laughs> the, the bottom line is that we're we're very interested in continuing the growth and storage, and uh, it, it may be in a virtual area, it may be in a physical area, it may be in a backup area. But yeah. uh, clearly, there's a couple of places that are pretty obvious that we, you know we we've got some room to grow, and we don't think we don't think tape is dead. We do think more people are going to go do backup and recovery in uh, disk-to-disk ways and the ways that the software provides. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. I think the industry has yet to shake out as much capability in that space as it has in the primary space, mm -hmm. uh, examples of ecologic and compelling. Mm -hmm. I don't think you see as much in the, in, in the backup space, but you see a lot of startup companies starting to stick their heads up and the winners are starting to become a little bit easier to pick. You think backup's broken? Uh, I, I think backup, if you're talking to tape, I think backup uh, is, is difficult. Some companies do it very well, but it's because they manage it with process. The products and technology is uh, a bit uh, dated compared to what we can do. And I don't mean that by tape is dated. I mean the, 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 the kinds of things you can do, like automatic tiering that, that Compellent does, doesn't exist in tape yet. And uh, there are, I, I know some of my, my tape ISV buddies would disagree with me, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think it exists the way customers see it. And so, uh, so I think there's room to grow there. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's broken, but I don't think it has experienced the, the uh, renaissance of technology that the others have. Yeah, and you've got some assets that can help uh, accelerate that renaissance, right? I mean, things like snapshots where you're doing you know, CDP, yeah. and I mean, most of the recoveries are, are, are not old data, right? It's fresh data, so you can, you can envision how you might be able to change the way in which those, some yeah. of those processes work. Well, we built, as an example, we built an object store DX, the, the DX6000 object store product. The, the basic operating system of object store is awesome. This thing can store billions of, of, of objects and find any object in the system in like 11 milliseconds. Mm. So it's like, it, it is extraordinary. But an object system requires an application to, to load all the metadata that makes it an object system. And so now you have all these companies, not scrambling, but you know they're beginning to deploy object-based uh, capabilities. So we started off with like three vendors when we launched that product about a year ago, and I bet we have 25 ISV partners on it now. So that's growing, but it's it's one of those areas where uh, customers just don't understand that product yet. They don't they don't understand exactly what it can do. I mean, this is a product that once it fills up and can shut down and and turn completely green, it'll it'll shut the array off. Policy and based. It's all metadata. policy. But it's hard to get to that point where it's really simple. It, it, <laughs> and it's hard it's hard for a customer to believe in a one single repository for all future storage. And so, uh, but but we're headed there. I mean, that's that's kind of where this technology takes you. It's like you got, it's Kelly, I heard some of the program yesterday, you and John were talking to one of the guests, m might have been you, Darren, or Phil, or somebody, about the whole Lund management mentality. You know, that's my job. Is, oh, yeah. You had said, a CEO doesn't want to pay somebody to right. do, you know, manage yeah. their storage. And that's so true. And, and I think that uh, that applies, yeah. but it just takes a while. Yeah, Object we're, is the it, it, you, you know, I, I, I'm old enough to remember when we introduced RAID, we had a term called RAID afraid. Yeah. And customers were afraid to try RAID. Yeah. And then, and, and then you know, backups and people, we had a statement, you know, anybody can back up, but only God can restore. And, and, and you know, we've had all these jokes throughout the industry. And, and so now, you know, we're, we're, we're moving to, we're going to ask you to get your hands off the box. Stop turning the knobs, <laughs> and and it, you know they're like uh, you know it, it, you're you're asking people who we've trained that had to turn the knobs to stop, yeah. and uh, it's it's like watching an obsessive compulsive not do something, right? <laughs> so we we have to unfortunately let you oh. go, but I if I have time for one more question, do we get any stories about your history, your old college buddies? No, that's Peter Kors. Oh, that's Pete yeah. Kors. Have you had I'm Peter sorry. I, no, you got to get I texted Pete him. I said, yeah. He said he'd try to come on this afternoon. Oh, okay, but, okay. But Pete's my next door neighbor. But, uh, and, <laughs> oh, and is I don't he? Th yeah, I don't think he knew I was living there when he bought the land and he started me. building a house. And I'm thinking, eh, well, I don't know if that says good or bad about me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Peter was I got my, my wires uh, big brother at the, in college. Is, uh, was he really? Yeah, so oh, yeah. College, awesome. So, uh, he is, he's my, uh, he's my Viking. You know, Pete. Pete's a big guy. You know, if I if he's I ever go guy. into a bad neighborhood, I take Pete with me. Yeah, so uh, we hope to get him on. We'll talk yeah. a little bit about <laughs> what he's doing with uh, Exonet and NAS and yep. a lot of good changes. Hey, well, thanks very much for spending so right. much time with us Thank and you. coming on the queue. Thank you again. Right. I always enjoy. All right.